Beautiful and phenomenal job at setting the scene for this particular film and just showcasing all of the different elements, the busy, buzzing, kids running everywhere, people going to work, trash man, and, and just all these different pieces that brought this metropolis of an area together and just bring about that depiction and that setting for this city. You got guys playing dominoes. You got people riding bikes and you got guys at the barbershop getting their hair done. People playing in a cardboard box, crawling down the street. You got girls blowing bubbles and playing jump rope. You got guys playing handball off the steps. People playing patty cake, showcasing just black culture. Now this game, I don't even recognize. You got the nosy grandma in the window. People playing the uh, rock'em sock'em robots. It just showcase kids outside having a good time, playing all sorts of games, being creative, playing with paper airplanes, playing red light, green light. I thought this part was pretty confusing, how all these kids was gathered over here in this corner, just all of them bunched up, watching these two make out, and these two are just going completely at it. Why? This boy actually had a bugle to call his children back to the house for dinner. Now this is probably what caused the mom to develop cancer. Goodness, what is happening at this man's home? Is that a sheep in the background? What is he doing? What is this couch? What is this sweater? Oh, okay. Just a young lady waking up out of her sleep in the middle of the night. Fair enough. Nothing crazy happening here. Uh what what in the world is going on why 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 did we need to include this in the film why was this a part of the film and for any reason this was one of those fragmented things that i was talking about where it seems like it just stuff would happen and then it would be for no reason it was no explanation you were just left to interpret it why let's just all agree this young man pajamas are the absolute worst. And you got Spike Lee with a paper bag to his face. I believe he was using this bag before he wrote the script. Buddy out here sniffing wood glue. These boys were so high that they were upside down. Spike Lee something else, man. This guy, every time he showed up on the screen, he was hanging with these kids. He had to have been 38, 39 years of age. And every time I looked, this boy was hanging out with the children. Why? Also, who wears short shorts? This boy called him a Chinese Puerto Rican chink spit. He turns around and calls him a chocolate black nigga. First of all, any grown man referring to another grown man as chocolate, you are out of bounds. I'm getting all emotional. I can't even sing now. You're getting all emotional. You can't even sing now. First of all, why are you with these kids? Then you calling kids niggas. Now you're getting emotional and they tell, what are you doing? Did not realize that this dude was in this film. Why is this girl here standing straight up? These young men find this black cat, corner it, and capture it. Take it down the street. Start walking towards the girls. Starts chanting, rashy, mustachy, doodly do. Swinging the cat around and then throws the cat on the girls. And I'm just completely and utterly confused. Then the boys got the nerve to look surprised that the girls didn't like that. You can't throw a cat on people and expect them to be okay with it. Immediately as the kids are arguing, these two walk up and say, say who got some money for my right hand and my main man, Snuff. I'm assuming that Snuff is the cat that they threw. Also, this young lady in the pink shirt Still got tomato and salt all over her lips. 
and then they walk up with two rings around their lips. What is going on? Why ain't nobody wiping their lips? Spike Lee looked like a sous chef at a retirement home. That boy got caught lacking. So in this scene, the mom's trying to make him finish his peas. He don't want to finish the peas. He don't like peas. And she just having to give him a grown man portion of peas. And this is black households for you. Like they always a pile your plate high. The whole time you're like, man, why do I got to finish these peas? I, I don't like peas. Whole time the mom like, eat the peas. This was confusing because they constantly complain about Tony Oz, their neighbor, constantly complain about him as a neighbor. Then he comes out, getting ready to put his trash into this trash can and has a change of heart. Decides to head over to his stoop, takes a peek around first to make sure the coast is clear and throws the trash over into his section. But what also confused me was he was throwing the trash one by one instead of just dumping the bag and leaving. Then the boy told the man, I ain't throw nothing, you imagining things. But he's literally looking dead at you in your face in real life with trash in your hand, throwing it into his area. The boy told this man, just shut the hell up. That's a lie. How dare you talk about my family like that? You should be shot. But whole time you was literally throwing the trash into his area. Where's the logic? So the mom comes outside and says, Wendell, what is going on? He said, this man is accusing me of things I didn't do. But he's taking the trash out, but he's not by the trash can. He's on the stoop. My God, what is he wearing? I'm trying to figure out whose grandmother's shoes does he have on? This boy said, you killed my mother. This guy is yelling out, you killed my mother, you know what happened. This film never goes into what that meant, what that was about, none of that. It's like Spike Lee, just, what are you doing? What does this mean? She says she probably killed a dang self trying to stay away from you. And then the scene immediately switches to this scene. First of all, what the hell is a potato bud? Did not realize until I was older that this was RuPaul. Why did they randomly just show this cross-dressing guy dancing with this, I don't know, Puerto Rican or Cuban, Latin? And of course the film never goes into why it showed this. And then Troy walks in and then the, Troy walks in and the lady just still dancing, looking dead at her. And what are these movements? What is she doing? If I see anything like this in a convenience store, I'm walking straight back out. She over here twerking on this dude, but looking dead at Troy, a little girl. And it's just like, God, Spike Lee, just why? Oh, come on, Connie. No, no. Buddy said, oh, come on, Connie. <laughs> What? Buddy, this desperate out here. Why is he like trolleying back and forth right in front of her like this? Like some confused choo-choo train. First of all, this this sign, does that mug say coffee sandwich? What type of sandwich is that? Did he looking at Troy with the why he look like Bobby Schmurder? Bro, bro look just like Bobby Schmurder, except he got like a little hair on his head. He looking at Troy with the, I just did something stupid face. She looking at bro like, idiot. So Troy goes into the store that she's bought something from before and tries to steal a bag of chips. But it's the chips that's facing the cash register dead in everybody's eyesight. Why wouldn't you just go pick up a bag and then go down the aisles and do this? Why do it right in front of the register? So of course he catches her like instantly because she's just sitting right there. Everybody's so weird. Why did he just tell her to leave and don't come back till she got some money and then pops her on a butt? What? I'm trying to figure out why everybody was so obsessed with this girl and, why, and her being flat chested. She every bit of five years old. What the hell was going on in this film? <laughs> this house was in full chaos mode. What exactly is happening right now? They're dragging the mom down the steps. 
somebody holding on to one of the kids. Wendell's standing right here. The dad about a mom. What is happening? Then the dad stops everybody from yelling and, and says, what I want is some respect for the work that I do in this house. What does that have to do with anything happening right now? How did you take your wife being dragged down the steps and kids hanging off her and people yelling and people kicking and screaming and make it about you at that moment? Another question is, are these all kids by him? Because little homie that's touching her arm right now, homie look questionable. This was confusing as well. They uh, was sometimes referred to her as Miss Kumish Mimish. And I looked up online trying to figure out what that meant. And I just couldn't find anything. So Troy had this whole conversation with her dad. And she does this thing where she'll display high levels of maturity. And then she'll just go off the deep end and just do like really immature stuff. This boy got Knicks versus the Celtics tickets. And she fed us steal the tickets. And then went into his drawer and found his Buffalo Nickel collection. Why does he even have that to begin with? Went into his Buffalo Nickel collection and stole all of it. Took the nickels and went and bought ice cream with it. Like just bogus. Like just bogus. So then her brother finds her, confronts her about the tickets and puts her in a headlock. And then she ends up handing the tickets back over to him. But why did you take them in the first place? I just, I don't understand. Like she'll display high levels of maturity at, in one scene and just completely just throw all of that away in another. First of all, why is this random boy in a window and just having this whole sweet little conversation with their mom? She just handed this young lady some food stamps and they're actual separate pieces of paper. I remember that because it looked like foreign money like it was like red and green and yellow it was just weird so the mom sent her to the grocery store with the food stamps but she has older brothers why don't she send the oldest brother to go and do some of this stuff all the responsibility is put on her and she's not that old i never understand this this part confused me because she's not stealing something that a kid would want to steal she over here still in pork steaks. And it's just like, wait, what? So immediately after she steals this from the store, goes home and grabs a pail. This is a pail. Fills it up with hot, steamy water and then pours it on this young man on the stoop. But I'm just trying to figure out why. Why is this little girl so disturbed? Why does she keep doing things? She keep randomly doing stuff. This girl was just about to steal from the store. Well, she did steal. Got home. And it's like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and pour steaming hot water on this, on this young man standing on the steps. So I'm assuming that she's dreaming that she's being chased by Spike Lee and his other guy. And they sniffing glue. These boys, <laughs> where my money? This girl said, I ain't got no money. I only got food stamps. That boy said, you know dang well we take those too. Look at Spike Lee, bro. What does this boy be doing with these films? They catch her and make her sniff glue? I don't understand. Spike Lee, what the hell is going on, bro? What was your family doing? Why is these y'all stories? So what did this girl take? Why was she breaking out in a cold sweat? Like I said, man, this movie really doesn't go into anything. So far as details, it just it just shows things happening and then just moves on from there. This girl is completely profusely sweating. This part kind of confused me because they were basically making it seem like the dad had just got back into the family, like he just came back. They didn't really give much of a timeline as to how long he was gone and how long he's been back. But this guy shows up and says... We getting ready to cut off your electricity. You have you have got to pay your bill. You haven't paid your bill. So she turns and she asks the dad, "Did you pay the bill?" And he's like, "Yeah, I paid this. I this is the second time." And I'm just like, "But he's been kicked out. How long was he gone? Was he gone for like a couple of days?" It's just weird how they pace the movie. There's not a lot of explanation. It just it just shows things happening and it doesn't explain anything. 
So now it shows the family. They all in the car. Everybody's packed up. They better hit the road. So did they did they pay the bill or do, did the electricity get paid or what? What happened with all of that? And then they never mention what she whispered to her. Let's just say the cars in the, from the seventies, a lot of them cars was bogus because this looked like something from the Jetsons. Now, as soon as they go inside of Aunt Viola's house, this was the camera angle for the remainder of the film. And I, I, I don't know why they did this lens this way. They were saying that it's supposed to represent it you know, like their narrow mindset over in this particular part of the city supposed to represent it like a, a narrow perspective. But I think somebody just messed up with the camera and didn't know it. And they put this out. Was his eyebrows always gone like that? Or did they, did they just do that now? First of all, why do all these Barbie dolls look crazy as hell? Bro, what is the auntie wearing? This girl got on a literal like curtain kimono. Bro, what is this outfit they got this girl in? This girl got on a McDonald's polo top with suspenders. Like, what? Got this girl looking like a whole Happy Meal. Ooh, ah, uh, come, Bellini, Achi, Kachi, Liberace, I love you. What? Bro, I feel like that's a curse, and I just sat there and said it. It says, take a peach, take a plum, take a stick of bubble gum. What type of witchcraft is this? I don't know why this little show, this little snippet was so creepy to me as a kid. Hey, it's real easy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Paula, girl, I am speaking to you. I don't have to listen to you. This was so confusing to me. You just got done singing a gospel song. Just got done singing hallelujah, amen. She all she asked was, did y'all wash y'all hands from coming in from outside? And it was just like, I don't have to listen to you. What? And they keep focusing on this girl's chest. This movie's so weird. I thought it was weird how they had her spend her birthday away from her siblings, away from her dad, away from her mom. And with some other folk. And I understand the mom was dealing with stuff. And so they was dropping all the kids off. And so they can hang out with different people. So the mom could, you know, figure her, figure her life out. But man, it just seemed like that just was just odd to me. It's a training bro. You're not going to need that for quite a while. <clears throat> Why does everybody keep focusing on this girl's chest? I don't understand. South Mrs. Carmichael. Yep. All the boys are still on the stoop playing I stratomatic do. baseball. So it sounds like everybody was back at home. He said, all the boys are still at this at home playing stratomatic baseball. People keep asking when she's coming back home. Why was Troy the only one that had to stay as long as she stayed? But it looked like the trash that he picked up was trash that was on the ground that more than likely they threw over into his yard. I don't understand why they mistreated this dude like this bad, this whole film. Dude, of course he got a smelly house, smelly dogs or whatever. But from what the movie has shown, his boy ain't really did nothing to nobody. My children are constantly over here throwing that trash on my property. True. Well, at least they finally admitted it. And see, it's just like, bro, like they've been doing this boy bogus this whole film. That is unfortunate that the father had his solo concert the, the exact same night of the NBA championship. Don't ever let me do what I want to do. I want to go home. It's just so much happening. Like, why is she up all of a sudden jump up and was just like, I want to go home. I forgot about this part. How did I even forget about this? She asked, did you find her mama knowing good and well that they stuffed this dog inside of the couch? Don't worry, mama. Queenie will show up. It's Man, this the serial killer and these girls. How they acting like this? Hurry, hurry. Pick up the car. Viola, help them with the pillars. Why was she rushing everybody so badly? Like, what was the point of that? Oh, my gosh, bro. 
the fact that they literally put this dog inside this couch and the, nobody nobody heard this dog making noises or saying anything is wild to me this lady said lot god take me right now i don't want to live anymore without my baby these girls showing no emotion just dead in the eyes she completely distraught look at how she's looking like why everybody looks so evil with this I like that. they didn't kill this dog <laughs> and then started a conversation about visiting each other later on what type of what type of spike lee bro <laughs> what is this film this girl say sorry you got squashed to death in the sofa even though i hated your guts but why why they were so extra about this how they had her waving and running after the car so this girl is at an airport by herself alone I don't understand this film. It's so many things that I just wasn't paying attention to. Why is she alone? I just realized that's Spike Lee's sister. Don't know why I just not realized that. So her birthday was yesterday and she was able to come home today. Why y'all just didn't bring this girl home a day earlier? They didn't tell her because they didn't want her to worry herself silly. But all the other boys are already back at home and they know what's going on. But they've been acting more immature than she has this entire film. She's been the most mature person out of the entire group. Why wouldn't y'all let her know? When they really drove home that depiction of her being sick, they drove it home. All this happened within 30 days. Like I said, she have these moments where she'll show like these extreme levels of just like maturity, understanding, and foresight. And then she'll like steal your buffalo nickels and buy ice cream, steal meat from the store, and pour hot water on you. Like... She said, I need you to watch out for Joseph, your little brother. He's the youngest. Yeah, she knows that. Why does she explain it like they just had a new little brother that she didn't know about? They said, watch out for Joseph, the little, your little brother. He's the youngest. He's your responsibility. But he has older brothers. Why won't, why don't they, why don't we ask the brothers to do this? And why she keep whispering stuff to her that we can't hear? She said, go get the car. I'm ready to go home. What? So wait, she told him to go get the car. She's ready to go home. Where is she at? I don't understand why they got her doing all of the work. She's 10 and you got older brothers. I'm just not getting it. It's six of y'all. So the dad's coming in while the kids are dancing and watching Soul Train, getting ready to deliver what looks to be some bad news. So all the kids are, are sobbing and crying. And I never noticed this as a kid that she just sat there. No emotion, just kind of heartless. Not really phased by anything, just sat there. That's so odd to me, yo. Yeah. And then the first time in this entire film, the older brother shows some maturity. So the little brother comes in and says, Troy, they keeps laughing and pointing at him. Little brother comes in and says, Troy, they keep laughing and pointing at me, saying that his mom is dead, his mom is dead. So somebody's making fun of the boy and poking fun at him. He comes in, walks right past the older brother who's sitting right next to her and gets Troy. Also walks past all of the adults in the house. Uncle Vic, his dad, aunts, uncles, all of them to go to Troy. And somebody took his money. First of all, where was the little brother at where he was able to get robbed virtually on the day of his mom's funeral and nobody else saw that? Where was he by himself? I don't understand this film, man. What is, what is going on? Why did he go and get Troy? Why ain't no adults outside in intervening? Yo, thanks for watching that What's That About episode today. Like I said, this movie had a lot in it that was just kind of confusing. I really didn't know why things was placed in it. It seemed fragmented. Nothing was really explained in a lot of moments. A lot of things were sort of brushed over. Overall, it's a classic film that I, I still do enjoy watching. A lot of, I guess, a sense of nostalgia from it. But this film is just 
something that I noticed that it was just had a lot of que- had a lot of moments where I'm just like stuck with questions and I'm just kind of like confused. That is it for this video, you guys. Like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys soon. Peace.